Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Blue. I work with Umbrella Lane and I am just going to be the little person in the background tonight. Don't worry, it's not me that's talking. It's going to be the fabulous Jack the Stripper who's going to be talking to us this evening. I hope you all got my note about pen and paper. If not, quickly go run and grab a pen and paper. We're going to do some drawing. Okay, <laughs> and with that I'm going to stop talking and hand over to Jack. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you, Blue, for that beautiful introduction and to Umbrella Lane for having me do this workshop. Um, the art of winging it. So if you don't find that charming, that's just too bad. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I'm really happy to be here and be doing this. I was actually going to teach my first art workshop last weekend at Some of Us Festival. But since we can't do that, I thought it would be really fun to try to teach this on Zoom because, I don't know, Bob Ross is one of my idols. I grew up watching a lot of TV where, I, so I'm Canadian and we don't, like I didn't have a lot of channels growing up. So I used to just love watching like instructional TV. Actually, one of my heroes as a kid was Art Attack, which was a show from the UK. Do you guys know that show? Okay huge fan of that show wanted to i made all of the like i didn't know what loo roll was forever because we call that a toilet paper roll here but i learned so much from that and i always wanted to be like an art instructor but like really fun and organized on tv but i'm not very organized and i've decided that that's one of my charms so if you are also lacking in organizational skills I encourage you to say that this is one of your charms and to just surround yourself with organized people who love you and they'll help you when it's necessary. Because I don't know, they, like the, one of the wonderful things about DIY is like you can do anything by yourself, but then it's also really wonderful to welcome in people who are better than, better at you, better at things than you are. So today's workshop is, I don't know, the art of winging it. Basically what we're gonna do today, if you're comfortable with it, is we're gonna draw self portraits of your bad bitch selves. So if you have your phones or whatever device that isn't on Zoom, if you can pick the last thirst trap you took and have it open on your phone, that would be amazing. <laughs> okay, so get if you have I'm, I'm giving you guys a minute to have a thirst trap search you don't have to take the most recent one but i don't want you to think that you have to find the absolute best thirst trap because your drawing is not going to look like it anyway like, it's going to look like something totally different sorry the last thirst trap okay a thirst trap is a sexy photo you can take of yourself it can be your it can also just be your favorite photo i suggest taking a like picking a photo that maybe not just your face because faces are really hard to draw it's more fun when you're kind of working with a whole figure because i don't know details are tricky but if you're just working with arms and legs and boobs and butts it you can really kind of do anything with that so take a minute to find a photo of yourself where you feel amazing how's everyone doing does everyone have their thirst trap Yes, nodding. No, not yet. You're still looking. Okay. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. And if and if you're really not comfortable to, like drawing yourself, just pick a photo of somebody who you think is hot. Because there's nothing wrong with drawing somebody else. Also, you've already if you put on makeup today, you've already done an art project because your face is a canvas, right? And if you've already written something on a piece of paper, you've already drawn something today. So, if you can draw, if you can write, you can draw. So don't put too much pressure on yourself or anything. The art might look terrible and who gives a shit? What's important, or for me, what's important as an artist is that, or the reason why I keep doing art is because I like myself when I'm drawing. I really like who I am. I like, I have like positive things going on in my head when I'm doing it. It's not something that I'm really critical about. Um, it's not something I have a lot of self doubt about. It's just something I kind of enjoy doing. And I hope that I can like bestow that feeling onto you because the last thing that you should feel today is pressure to do anything. It's really, the, the whole objective here is to like hang out and have a good time because these times are shit and we don't know what's gonna happen, but if we can hang out for an hour in color and you know, see ourselves in a wonderful light, wouldn't that be, isn't that lovely, right? Yeah, you're all muted. I'm used to comedy, so I'm used to hearing laughter, so like, 
bear with me to learn this new medium. Okay, you have pencils, you have paper. Okay, so on your paper, I hope, do you guys have like more than one paper? Hopefully, okay, so this is a paper for writing a couple of things, great. So on your first paper, we're gonna like write some phrases. So I want you to say something nice about yourself. And I want you to write it down. I, what am I gonna write down today? I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write, I am charming as hell. Or heaven, no, as hell, that's, that's what came out. What's my other positive affirmation about myself today? I am a really good dog mother. So just have those written down. They can also be really, like you can write a couple. I like to start with two. Also, you know what's been going on in my head? I'm a bad bitch. And I'm very good at getting money. So these are things that I would say to myself when I was working at the club, when I was having a hard time. I would just have to like reset and be like, well, one of my, like one of the repeating things that I would always say was like, I am kind and generous and I attract kind and generous people. And one time I was having like the worst fucking night ever. It was one of those really busy nights, but I wasn't making any money. And some, I like wasted too much time with some asshole who did not give me any money. And I just closed my eyes. I was about to cry. And I said, I am kind and generous and I attract kind and generous people. And I opened my eyes and this guy, and my friend's boyfriend just showed up in front of me. And he's like a really cool guy. And he, he's one of those guys who goes to the club and just like takes all of his colleagues there. And he's really sweet. And I was just like, I saw like a safe face. You know, and you know when you just see a safe face is amazing. So affirmations are powerful. Does anybody want to share their affirmation? Does anybody want to type it or hold it up? Here, I'll show, I just, I don't know. Is this going to be in reverse or can you read these? Are these legible? Okay, so I wrote, I'm charming as hell. I wrote, I'm really good. I'm a really good dog mother. I didn't bring my dog here, but I'll, I can show photos if you want. And then I wrote, I'm a bad bitch and I'm very good at getting money. I have a big and tender heart. Yes. Cute AF. Yes. I am GD fun. Yes. Yes. I did lots of blue painting today. Oh, you've already made art, Jazz. Amazing. Okay. You are fun. Yes. Good. Okay. Great. I can talk about sex. That's a huge gift. A lot of people can't do that. I don't take shit from any people. Good. I make something out of nothing. Fuck yes. I have nice eyes and can I make people laugh and smile? Yeah, you do. You're a good writer. I am beautiful and deserving of love. Yes. You guys are really good at these. This is wonderful. Well done, everybody. Okay, so now my second question is um, when or where? do you feel most powerful? And if you don't really know like when, or like if you don't have an answer before you write it down, it's really helpful to just start writing. Like I feel powerful when, and just see what comes out of your hand onto the page. Like I wrote, I feel powerful on stage making people laugh. I know this about myself. Um, I'm happy doing that. But this, I was looking for like a second time that made me feel powerful and I didn't really know what that was and then I just started writing it and I wrote I feel powerful when I'm listening and I never really made that realization until right now I think sex work taught me to be a really good listener I was a shit listener before I was always just waiting to interrupt people with a story that would didn't matter so I was an asshole basically and um yeah I'm better at that now so I'm grateful for that Does anybody, if you want to share, um, is that, if you want to share when you feel most powerful in the comments, that would be awesome. Okay. I feel powerful on stage. I, pe I feel powerful when I establish boundaries. Yes. I feel powerful when I'm, helped, when I'm helping. I feel powerful when I'm traveling, winning. Oh, I miss travel, <laughs> winning, creating. I feel powerful on the dance floor. Yes. I feel powerful when I'm flirting. That's hot and fun and makes me really miss flirting. <laughs> I feel powerful when I'm writing. I feel most powerful when making someone come. Yes. 
I feel powerful in front of someone who is about to pay me. Hot. I feel powerful when I talk with strippers I admire. I feel powerful naked on stage with heels on. Yes. And a board meeting presenting my badass research. Yeah, I want to hear more about that. I feel powerful when I'm talking about a topic I am passionate about. There's a lot of power in here. Yes. Wonderful. I feel powerful after having a good day living in my house. Yes. Ugh. Yes. Um, so hold on to these. If you have like two, when you're writing these down, hold on to these ideas. And then I guess the final question before we start drawing, because I'm very excited to draw, is um, what does abundance look like to you? So I didn't, I didn't prepare these. I just kind of wanted to wake again, wing it. So just to, coming to mind right now, abundance to me is a healthy meal. I, um, I've been in recovery from bulimia for like, I guess 10 or 15 years now, but I was bulimic for eight years and I have a ton of really complicated relationships to food that I've been working on for a long time. And I'm so happy that it is mostly behind me, but like having a healthy balanced meal and like a pro appropriately portioned and not feeling like I need to overdo it. Like that feels like abundance to me because it's like the knowledge that like I have, I am abundant, but I don't need to consume all of the abundance in order for me to appreciate it. You know, that's kind of something that I've been working on generally in my life. Cause I used to just like, you know, eat the whole fucking pint of ice cream and now I don't have to do, I can I need if I really want to, but doesn't usually make me feel very well. So that's one thing. And then abundance for me is laughter with friends. Cause that just makes my heart feel so abundant is like when people are laughing together and then abundance to me is no worries. Just the whole, just not feeling stressed feels abundant to me. Um, does anybody want to having no fear or shame? Yeah. Abundance for me is a big fat payday. Yes. Yes. Abundance is a peaceful mind at ease with eating and drinking habits and stacks of cash. I love abundance is also counting my money. <laughs> Just sitting around like the sound, you know, the and then you put it in a pile and then like, like I'll just count it forever, especially if it's like the next day and I don't have to wake up early. Abundance for me is freedom. Abundance is where there are no needs or sweet tastes on my tongue. Abundance is kindness, creativity, and connection. Yeah. I think when I first thought of abundance, I thought about it exclusively in terms of fat sacks of cash, and that's part of it, and that's wonderful, but it's been really freeing to me to, to feel abundant even if I don't have stacks, fat, fat stacks of cash in front of me because this work that we do is so inconsistent and and if I only validated myself with money, I would be really sad most, like a lot of the time. Because I, I was also, I've never been a top earner. I was always just a perfectly okay stripper. Sometimes I'd have really good nights, but like, I, I have so much respect and admiration. I learned so much from the women around me who were hustling so hard. But I could, I could never squeeze the dollars out like these other bitches could. I remember like watching these other women just take everything and I didn't know how to do that. And it also wasn't a huge desire of mine, honestly, um, cause I felt like the trade off was, was pretty significant, especially in New York city. It's a really tough town to work. I kind of just like took what I needed and left also cause I got so bored of the clients. <laughs> it just couldn't stay. But, um, but that's me. It's different for everyone. But I, I think just, I don't know, still feeling abundant, even if I'm not at the top. I think the idea of, of abundance and then being at the top is kind of contradictory. And, and that's like a, a lesson that capitalism is kind of like instilled in us. And I want to pull away from that and reevaluate what abundance looks like to us. Yeah. Abundance is when I have time to be creative, when I can eat whatever I want, when I feel so rich that I can be generous with others. Yeah. And when there is nothing on the to-do list, seriously, I wish I had nothing on my to-do list. <laughs> abundance, I, abundance to me is feeling secure for the meantime. Yeah, yeah, for the meantime. Abundance can also just be feeling present and feeling okay with exactly where we are right now. 
and having security, a safety net, feeling independent and free. Abundance is picking up the tab for my friends. Oh my God, I can't wait to buy all my friends dinner. Whenever that, like, yeah, that's a, God, that's such a fantasy. Such a fantasy. Okay, does everybody have a thirst trap ready to draw? Yes, okay, great. I have, I have a painting that I did of myself when I was feeling sorry for myself. This is my giant thirst trap, okay? I'm very proud of it. You can't even see it, it's so big. Okay, this is me on my side. This is my biggest painting to date. I, was, I painted it in quarantine when I was feeling sorry for myself. And I painted on the bikini of my dreams. I painted on abs that I don't really have. Like, you know, like whatever. Maybe I'll have those abs one day, maybe I won't. Who gives a shit? I have them in this painting. And this painting might outlive me, so whatever, right? <laughs> There's gonna be, I'm waiting for like the Snapchat ad filter. Maybe it already exists. Okay, so I'm gonna paint that because that's in front of me and I don't wanna look at my phone while I'm doing this. But you have your thirst trap picture. All right, first of all, I'm wondering what I should start with. I'm gonna start with a Sharpie. You can go with pencil first if you want. Whatever writing utensil you have is fine. The first thing is that like, forget about whatever you think this is gonna look like because it's not gonna look like that and let that go let yourself be surprised by what you create let it be interpretive you know the picasso was a successful artist and none of his paintings looked like what he was looking at you know what i'm saying so just who gives a shit have a good time so what to start with let's see how we can see here when i start painting i kind of just start with the outline of the body and when you're looking at a body, whatever you're seeing, try not to think of it as an arm or a boob or a nose. Like if you think of hands as actual hands, you'll never draw them right. Because they're really complicated and they don't usually look, they don't look like this in the picture, right? And that's what we think a hand looks like. They kind of look like this and they're just lines and shapes. So with your pen, just start drawing, just try something. I like to start with the face shape. I always kind of start with, with the chin line. I don't know why. I just make a shape. And you're committing to it. And I try to like, try to think about where it's gonna lie on the page. And don't worry if it's, if it's wrong and if you have to work on it later. So with me, I see my face. I'm just gonna draw a kind of, a, that's, oh my God, can you see it? Oh no. You can kind of see it, all right? Dry your face, and then now, do you guys all have faces in yours? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. We're all going to different faces, but just draw kind of your chin line, because your hair is later. The hair is like the accessory, and we're not drawing accessories now. We're just getting the bare bones part. So the jaw. Then I like to draw an eye. And when I draw an eye, it's really kind of just a squiggle wave like this, like it's the eye and then an eyelash. And you kind of look at your picture and you're like, yeah, it's about there. Don't, don't worry about measuring it. Just kind of do a thing. And then maybe draw the other one. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, you know, it depends on what it looks like. Just, you know, this doesn't look like a face yet. And then in the middle of the eye, wherever kind of, when I'm drawing a nose, I just draw like a little chevron. Like, here, I draw this. See, this is winging it. I haven't taught on Zoom yet. So I just draw a little boop like that. See, it already doesn't look like me, but it doesn't matter. I'm having a good time. And then, so that's kind of the start. And then I might draw, I might draw some lips. And for lips, I always do the top lip first. Okay, wait, wait, we can't see, we can't see, we can't see. Your picture is gonna look different. But the lips just start under the nose. They're usually quite a bit closer than you think. So right under the nose, draw a little lip. There we go. It looks, you know, it's like a, it's like a pussy. Okay. So then we get kind of intimidated because we wanna get the scale right. But you know what, whatever. Like sometimes I wanna draw myself with crazy, long legs maybe today i'll have a long torso because i always envy those long torsos but then i kind of start with the shoulders i don't know if your thirst traps have shoulders but shoulders kind of give a nice form to the body 
you're kind of creating a triangle, the shoulders to the midsection. Just look at the, look at the shape of the neck to the shoulder and then to the, this part of the arm. Whatever that's, whatever's happening in yours, just draw that. So if, let's say, let's say you're, you're taking a, a selfie in your thirst trap. Just notice the line from your neck to your shoulder to your elbow. And don't think of it too much as like your body, just think of it as where those shapes go. So for this, I see a neck, an arm, and an arm. And then, so once you get that going, like the top part, then I go straight to the boobs. Okay, if you love your boobs already, or if you hate, it doesn't matter, however you feel about, draw whatever you feel like, doing, whether it re re like reflects you or is like whatever. Like maybe today I want huge titties, for example. Cause like, why not? So I'm just gonna draw on, I have my arms already, and then I'm gonna draw these big ass boobs that are kind of floating because that's magic to me, levitating boobs. How are these shapes going? How's everyone feeling? Does anyone have questions yet? Is it best to use a marker? Sorry, that was three minutes ago. No, I'm just using a marker because I want you to see what I'm drawing, and if I was using a pencil, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Um, so that's why I'm using a marker. It's, it's more of a commitment if you use a marker. It's definitely less of a commitment if you use a pencil, and then you can go over it and erase it, but I'm trying to embrace the commitment of drawing something and it not being perfect and you being absolutely confident with it and still finishing the drawing because because we could if it didn't look right as soon as you started you could just abandon it and you could do you could waste 50 pages of paper before you got the right thing but that's not what it's about it's about us hanging out and making art you're using crayons i can't wait to see okay so now that i finished the boobs and then i kind of get to the legs part i'm going to I like to just, whatever, I'm drawing a waist. And then with the legs, the legs, think of your legs as like sausages. It's the top sausage is a bigger sausage. And then that's your thigh. And then your calf, your shin is a smaller sausage. And just notice the shape of where they're going without thinking too much about it. And if the perspective is weird, that makes the drawing more interesting. So if one leg is bigger than the other one, go for it. I'm going to draw a really strong, bigger sausage for the front thigh because of perspective, right? I'm going to draw this big, juicy leg. And then I'm going to go down. And then what else? I'm going to switch it up, I guess. No, I'm going to draw what I see. Oh, I already, okay. How is everyone feeling? I've chosen the third strap where my back is facing the camera, which is good because I have zo near zero boobs. Well, let's focus on your ass. So the whole shoulders boob drawing is a bit different for me. That's great. That's great. Go, instead of focusing on the boobs, just make a gorgeous curvy shape with the booty. Whatever, wherever you're at, because we all have different thirst traps, it's just about getting kind of the shape happening and and I really want your drawing not to look like the picture. Like I want you to just like take some liberties that you may have never considered. So I'm drawing spiral nipples because that's a thing that I'm into right now. Cause they're hypnotic. How is everybody feeling? Does anybody have questions about like what they're making or anything? Are we just, are we having a good time? Does anybody want to show up their drawing? Thank you for sharing. It's sometimes intimidating to share your art. Oh, cool. That looks awesome. Yes, amazing. I like the joy in the face. Who's the, whose face is this? I can't, blue, yeah. It feels like really, I really feel the, I feel the smiley energy from you in the, um, in the, in the drawing. Okay. So what do I have now? So let's fit. So how's it? So you guys have like figures happening. So let's see. Try your best to finish. If you're intimidated by hands, honestly, just tr try drawing hand 
without your pen leaving the page. Just look at the hand, whatever shape it is, and just draw the shapes that you're seeing, and it's gonna look really weird and probably amazing. I'm drawing tiny hands because that's weird. Okay, does everybody have the kind of general shape of their body? Have people drawn on legs yet and feet? When you're drawing feet, I used to just draw like ovals and those were like shoes. Um, but I really like shoes. So give yourself a shoe that you think would look like a Tim Burton shoe. Give yourself a shoe that you wish you were wearing right now, but probably can't wear because you're in quarantine. So I'm going to draw. When I was um, younger, I really wanted to be a fashion designer. So I would design, I would draw a lot of dancers and I would design really weird outfits on them. They probably weren't even that weird. They're probably like something that Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen wore in one of their videos. But um, now you have this figure that has no clothes on, right? You, maybe you've drawn clothing on her, maybe you haven't, or on this person. You don't have hair yet, right? Maybe you've drawn hair, maybe you've drawn the face. So now you have a, does everyone have more or less a figure that's, that doesn't really have any accessories yet? Like, do you have hands, do you have feet? Are you all kind of set up? Okay, so now you have, you have like this, another kind of blank canvas of whatever you want. So now is the time to play dress up. Now is the time to, to draw whatever outfit you want on your, avatar this is basically an avatar of you okay this is an abstract avatar so i don't i've drawn stripper shoes that have spurs on the back so maybe for like because i fantasize about riding a horse maybe i don't know or just always having a weapon at my feet something like that so right now have fun with your outfit what do i want to draw All right, have you guys drawn on eyebrows yet? No, okay. Eyebrows are really fun because they can change the entire expression and tone of your entire drawing. So you might plan what kind of eyebrows you want and draw them on. Or you might just draw, just draw some lines and see what the expression is afterwards. But I do a lot of self, when I'm drawing my cartoons, I draw, I take a lot of selfies and I look in the mirror a lot to be like, what do I look like when I'm angry? And I like scrunch my face up the most I can and I kind of like watch the shape of my brow. So if you couldn't have an idea, you're like, I want this bitch to be angry. Like look at your face and like see what your face does when you're angry. Or if you want to be really happy or curious or like if you're throwing shade, it's usually like this. And so figure out what eyebrow you like, or if you don't even know, just draw them on and then you step back and you're, and then your character is going to tell you what she's thinking without you even realizing it. So I just kind of drew whatever and my brows ended up kind of being like she was throwing shade because I like doing that, but I haven't drawn her eyes yet. So under those little swoopy squiggles, I just draw little dots and those are the pupils. This looks nothing, it looks exactly like me. Look at that. <laughs> okay, I drew some, I drew like a pompadour haircut because I've been, I've been feeling nostalgic for my very short hair. My wife cut my hair. It, it, yeah, she just cut it straight across. Um, it's working, it's working. Um, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna draw a mullet on my girl. Because I used to think mullets were so trashy and tacky, and now I really admire anybody who has the confidence to pull one off. You know, there's just, it's so nice to have an evolution of like judgment. Yes, see, you're the, yes, right? That's what's it. Like, I, they're fucking badass. Like, I don't know if I could ever do it, but when I see them, I'm like, that's just amazing. So I drew a mullet on mine. Is anybody getting creative with these outfits? Yes. 
Love that. Are those, is that chain? Is that like a, I can't hear anybody. Everyone's muted. I think I accidentally drew eyelashes on my eyebrows. That sounds amazing. That sounds like a really bold brow. That sounds like I picked a nude. So I'm drawing my tattoos instead of clothes. Amazing. Draw all the tattoos. I went long hair. You're not sucking a dick in yours, but you, you <laughs> it's beads. It's beautiful. Okay. I don't even know what I did on mine. I did. Okay. I drew like, I think it was like a flaming tutu and she's holding a ring, like a ring of fire. Maybe let me turn to my laptop. I don't know guys. I don't know what's happening, but she's powerful. That's all that matters. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, it's technically not good, but look how happy I am. You know what I'm saying? This is what we're going to take away from this workshop is you're just drawing something ridiculous and it's inspired by you because whatever is inside of you is going to come out on the page and it's who cares if it's not perfect. Perfect is boring. If you achieve something perfect, it means you have nowhere else to go. And how sad would that be? So I'm going to, I have some wild armpit hair right now in quarantine. So I'm going to draw some armpit hair on mine. Okay. What else? This is, you know what? I'm okay with this right now. So now, how are you, how is everybody, is everybody sort of, not to say that it's completed, but for the duration of this workshop, does everybody have kind of an outfitted line drawing of yourself, an abstracted version of yourselves? Hypnotic spiral boobs. That's what I was going for, Madeline. Thank you for noticing. Okay. So now take a step back and look at what you've created and I want you to go back to your, so this, this, how am I going to say this? Okay. So with this drawing, with this ridiculous drawing that is your beautiful creation, what we can go two ways here. I wasn't sure how I wanted to. So maybe if you're feeling, if you, if you look at your painting, your drawing, sorry, I'm kind of like, well, let's actually, let's do, let's, this can be a group activity. What do you think she's saying? Hold on, let me take this off the easel. Because when, when I do my drawings for the most, sometimes I have a drawing planned out with the caption, but for the most part, I just draw a figure and the caption comes later. The, the caption is inspired by what I actually drew. So what do we think this character is saying or thinking? If you look, she's got, I don't even know. I'm having a great time. <laughs> Honestly, that's it. Qcom. I'm a circus witch. I'm a powerful circus witch. Let my boobs hypnotize you. See, these are all amazing. I don't even know how I could pick. So when you look at yours, if you want help, we can help each other. But ultimately, I would love you to take your um, affirmations and pick which one you think best suits your character. And you're going to write it somewhere on the page, and you're going to put a speech bubble around it, and you're going to have a comic avatar of yourself. So... Oh my God, all of these, let my boobs hit. I'm a powerful circ. I'm having, I think I just like, I'm having a great time. So thank you, QCOM BTD. You know, she is a powerful circus witch. Okay, don't forget to sign your artwork. You need the world to know that you're, that you made shit. This is your legacy. Has everybody filled out their yes? Michelle, what did you write on yours? Oh, I can't read that. Can you bring the speech bubble closer? Just the speech bubble? My heart is very big and tender. Yes, that's beautiful. And you know, I see that. I feel that in your drawing. Nailed it. Does anybody else want to show the what comic they made? I'm seeing QCOM. Can you bring, wait, can it say I can? 
achieve whatever I put my mind to. And then can we see the drawing? Yes. Yes, bitch. That's beautiful. Oh my God. I love the hair. What does this one say? I am a femme goddess, a f something goddess. Mariah, it's beautiful. What does this one say? I'm looking at Heather's. I am doing my best. Fuck yes, you are. Are you eating? What are you, what's in your mouth? That's really technically beautiful. You did that in 20 minutes. Wow. Claire, I am fiercely achieving my dreams. Can we see the box? Yes. These are amazing. These are beautiful. I'm so happy. Oh, look at this outfit on Sarah. I love the detail. Wait, Madeline, I can't read yours. What does yours say? I don't take any shit from people. That's right. And then Tamara, I have time for healing motherfuckers. That's powerful. These are amazing. Sassy, sexy stuff. Amazing. Oh, wow. You've been drawing for a minute. That's beautiful. This is amazing. I'm loving everybody's stuff. Okay, we have like 10 minutes left. Let's, can we open, Blue, can we open the, um, unmute everyone so we can like ask questions or what, how did you want to do that? These are amazing. Or do you guys want to ask questions? Do you want to, how about we type questions in the chat box? Also, fine, not like final note, but if, do you all have a refrigerator? You should be putting this artwork on the refrigerator. So you see it every day and you proud of it and anybody else who you live with can be like, great work. I put all of my art on the fridge and my wife hates putting stuff on the fridge. She's like a no art on the fridge person, but I don't care because I pay half the rent, you know, so. And I, I show her all of my work and I just make her say that's great because like words of affirmation are not her love language. So I'm teaching her how important they are <laughs> by demanding compliments. Um, yeah. yeah, let's talk. Let's, I would love to hear questions or anything. Let's like, let's talk. When you're sitting down to create and feeling a little blocked or judgy, do you have any mantras to encourage yourself? Um, I like to try, it's not really a mantra, but I like to try a new medium because that's why I move around so much. Because if I, if I'm feeling blocked and I'm trying to draw something, but I've been drawing for a while and I don't really have confidence, I'll like get finger paints out or I'll paint makeup or I'll, uh, get crayons out. Because if you just change the medium for me, it changes my whole way of interacting with like the canvas or whatever. And I, I don't have any expectations of myself. It feels more like playing and less like I have to do something. So I highly recommend switching it up. It, Cause like everything is art supplies, you know, like makeup is art supplies. It doesn't have to be on your face. Um, food is art supplies. I just fucking around with anything is kind of the way that I get rid of those blocks. Can I, um, I was wondering how you stay so confident because I know it took a little while um, like when you were writing your first book it was hard to get it published and then you ended up self-publishing. I was kind of wondering how do you stay like motivated and keep yourself positive when it seems like everyone's being kind of negative and stuff? Well because the alternative is working for somebody else <laughs> and I don't know how to do that. I don't want to do that and I just, like, I was really disheartened when I was trying to get my book published. It was so many years ago. Like, I started writing The Beaver Show when I started stripping, so, like, <laughs> 10 years ago. And I wanted so badly to have traditional success of, like, an agent and a publisher. And, and, uh, and like, The Beaver Show has so many typos because, like, I can't line at it for shit. Like, there are plenty of compromises I made along the way to get it out there, but... Um, I don't know. It's kind of like the one thing that stripping teaches you is like, you know, when you're not welcome, you know, like, you know, when you're not welcome at the party. So I was clearly not welcome at the party of, for this example, publishing houses, like nobody gave a shit. And I was like, okay, well, how much harder am I going to try to be welcome to this party where nobody gives a shit? So I, I just, 
decided to do it myself. And that was once I started, once I kind of un unlocked my Instagram situation, like once I figured out that if you make something in a tiny square that people will share, mm -hmm. people, you can become more popular. So I kind of, I felt more confident with that, but honestly, confidence is something that I've had, I don't know, I, this is, a, I'm very privileged to have a really supportive mother who, um, she hasn't always been supportive, but you know, she's super confident and instilled that within me that everything is an adventure and everything's exciting and making mistakes is, is part of the excitement. Like fucking something up is the story you're going to tell later. So even if something shitty is happening to me, it's going to be comedy in like maybe two hours or maybe in two years, but at least I have that. And like, we all have our stories. So even if something is challenging or making you uncomfortable, like it's part of the story of who you are and you're going to tell that story to people that you love and people that you meet along the way. And so even the bad things end up just kind of investing in, in the person that you're becoming every day. So I think that's kind of the curiosity of failure and how that affects me is I guess keeps me confident. Cause even if I'm failing and it sucks right now, at least I'm like, well, this is going to be a funny joke in a minute. Like I, at least I have that. And if you don't have comedy, as a career, that's okay. You have comedy at dinner parties. You have comedy of like with your friends, like we're all telling stories like it. And nobody really wants to hear the story of how like it was so easy for you to win. <laughs> like that sucks. <laughs> nobody can empathize with that. So really remembering the shitty moments and how character building that can be, I think really makes me feel more confident. of just like having the humility to be like, well, this sucks and making a huge mistake right now. But yeah, you gotta keep trying. Yeah. That's a great question. Thank you. Zach, where are you going? What's your goal? What's my goal? Where am I going? Do you um, have a game plan or are you just gonna go with anything that you like and comes along the way? Um, well, I have a big goal. My big goal is that uh, I have a TV show that's in pre production. So that <laughs> is, but like, um, look at the world right now. I'm, it's not happening. Like it was so close to happening and then this happened. So we've had to step back and kind of start over. And so that has been my big fucking goal for a long time. But now that it's not possible, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, if that's not going to work for me right now, I have to do other things. So I think just having different things to keep me interested in keeping and help me survive like financially is really important because if I put all of my, if I invested absolutely everything into this one project and it didn't work out, I would be pretty depressed right now. But I'm learning that like commissions are actually pretty keeping me very busy. I've also learned that I undercharged. <laughs> so I have so much work to do right now. And I'm, it, I, you know, we all learn the hard way of undercharging. Right. And we, and it's like with sex work, it's so easy to be like, these are my rates. But with art, for me, it's harder for me to charge an adequate rate. So right now, I'm actually kind of drowning in creative work that is awesome. But like $50 was way too little to charge for like an original piece of art for somebody. And, I, and I'm learning this by spending all of my time doing them. So, so there's that. But I don't know. I'm actually just uh, – I welcome the opportunity of whatever's next because I know that – there's so much coming to me and I don't even know what it is yet. Like there's so many things that I can't even imagine. And I, I just want to have my arms open to welcome that because I can't initiate everything. I want to also be receptive to gifts, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to be on HBO on May 27th. There's this Ooh. TV show and they cast me as one of the actors in it. So I, I'm acting. I would love to act more, but again, got to wait. <laughs> I have a question, please. Yes, Madeline. Um, I'm such a big fan of yours, Jack. I'm thank you. buzzing that this is happening. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about moving away from day to day kind of sex work. And how is that? How's that transition? How, how is there not or is there still a kind of low back or, um, you know, what's the kind of mindset change? And how, how do you deal with that? It's been really hard, um, but it was very gradual. So I semi-retired from stripping 
two years ago. Like when, when Striptastic came out, so I guess almost three years ago now, um, I was doing a book tour and running an online store and making art and doing comedy. So stripping became less and less available to me because I just didn't have the time to do it. I had all these other cool projects. So the retirement was kind of reluctant, but also like the best case scenario for me because I had other things going on. And then, and then I always was like, Oh, I can always go back. I can always go back. But I tried going back and like the clubs wouldn't really have me because of, who knows why but like I think the rhetoric I spew about like charging more and things like that they don't really appreciate it so I kind of retired without really wanting to but the second I retired I got the I I got that acting job like I I needed to let it go so that I could welcome new things to my life I was clinging to something that was no longer available to me and like I was wearing my off-duty stripper t-shirt <laughs> the other day. And my wife is like, where's the retired stripper one? Because like the people who love me are <laughs> insisting that I let it go. You know, but me personally, I'm like, no, it's my identity. Like, who am I if I'm not a stripper? And I still grapple with that, you know, like what's the that stripping made me cool. Like otherwise I'm just some like boring girl from the the, the sticks who like, you know, has a big mouth and needs attention but stripping validated that. And now I just have to sit with myself, not being a cool stripper anymore. I'm just this, but it was, it was hard, but I think it was harder kind of denying it because I didn't announce my retirement until like, I don't know, a couple of months, man, what was it? This, the fall. So it'd been a year and a half of me not really stripping, but not feeling like I could share that because my whole career has been inspired by that and I, it doesn't mean I can't tell those stories anymore. It doesn't mean I'm not Jack the Stripper anymore. It's just like an identity crisis of like, well, this is everything that I've built, but I don't know. And like saying that I don't do it anymore, it feels like I can't even talk about it anymore, but that's not true. That's just something that I was telling myself. Like, cause I think I judged other people. Like I judged other women who were no longer in the game, but who were kind of using their clout to, to, uh, to sell shit or to be, to build their brand. But the reality is probably just jealous because they were successful. You know, it's like, well, just because Cardi B isn't stripping anymore doesn't mean she like, that's not a huge part of who she was and how she got there. And she can pull it out of her ass anytime she wants and talk about it. Like, Um, why are we so critical of people who have moved on? And I think it's, it's very hard to move on too, because you feel like committed to the community, but you also like, I don't know everything that's happening in strip clubs anymore because I'm not in them. I try my best to stay abreast, but I also try to manage a business and like, you know, be present with my family and like be an artist. So I, it's like the identity is also the responsibility and, and trying to manage all of that is, I don't know, I don't have any answers for that now, but being honest with myself of like where I feel the guilt and shame of like not being that person anymore and then like losing losing clout is is a thing that I thought about a lot and I still think about it I totally still think about it but I don't think it doesn't like take away the 10 years of my life I I did that work it's just when you move on from it it's you're just there I'm just there with myself now I'm just Jack new new chapter (laughs) yeah yeah and I want to bring it with me but I also like I don't know I also have to be okay with not being a stripper yeah let it chime in dead quick sorry to interrupt everyone uh we have two questions in the chat and we are running a little over time so i'm gonna read those out for you jack um, and then we're gonna wrap up there sorry everyone i know this is i love your questions i love being here so okay so the two questions from the chat first one is as an artist how do you negotiate the visibility that comes with social media how do i negotiate the visibility that comes with social media um well, some days are amazing and some days are really shitty. Um, having really good boundaries with social media is just as important as having really good boundaries with clients. Um, it's important to keep things just for yourself. And you don't have to respond to every call out, but you should listen to them. And I don't know. It's, sometimes it's amazing. Like sometimes I get free makeup <laughs> and I get like jobs just for being me and that's really cool. And then sometimes, 
I don't know. Sometimes I, if people know too much about me and it makes me feel really uncomfortable. So I don't know, limiting your access to social media, I think. And also to also just having shit that's for me. I, there's this conception that my entire life is on the internet and I'm flat and, and part of me thinks I'm doing a really good job to make people think that is my entire life. But like, there's so much more to me that the internet will never know. And just kind of just, and that's what sex work taught me is like, look, you think you know everything about me, but you don't even know the half of it. And that shit's for me. And uh, I think it's really important to have that regardless of what, what your job is. Yeah, definitely. The yeah. last question I'm afraid is are all of your characters parody, like that confused feminist art or artist in something, uh, the foam roller, or do they symbolize other things sometimes? They're basically just my parents. <laughs> Brian, it, like Brian is like, I don't have a relationship with my father, but like, but like, I look like my dad. So like when I do that, those facial expressions, my mom's like, oh my God, that's your father. But like my dad's demeanor isn't like that, but I just, and like my mom, I'm, my mom is, is like a weird art lady. So it, it's just like, these are the people in my life who I love and know very well. So parodying them is, it comes really naturally because it's a really full fleshed out character. The misguided art teacher, um, the like second wave feminist, she's a new one. I don't know. I think of characters all the time. They're just, honestly, guys, I just get really baked and I have an idea and I do it. And sometimes it takes off and sometimes it doesn't. And I, I don't really think that much about it when I'm making it, which is kind of like what we did today. Like I just do it. And sometimes people love it. And sometimes people hate it. Sometimes it's so wrong, but yeah, these characters are just, uh, well, Brian specifically, Brian is, is like, what if guys could be as vulnerable about like their journey as women tend to be? Not to be totally like binary about it, but like masculine culture kind of, you know, shames men about being vulnerable and like learning and being open to that. So Brian was like, well, what if what if your really sweet client was really open and like shared about his journey to be better? And I, I was like, well, that would be great. Like, you know how, like there's so many personal blogs about, you know, self-improvement, but I don't know that many that are like sex work clients. So I, Brian is like a fantasy. It's kind of like if the stigma was removed, what would these people be saying out loud? Same with Brenda, Brenda, like uh, sex workers who teach can't be out, but Brenda can be cause she's not real. Yeah. And I think highlighting and just drawing the similarities between teaching and sex work are so important. They're so similar, except for one is vastly underpaid and then the other one is vastly criminalized. It's just like, we really need to, instead of trying to divide and like say who's doing what and who's like us versus them, it's more about really acknowledging that like sex work is intrinsic to like most people's lives. We just don't call it that. Like we're always exchanging um time and energy and sex for something maybe it's affection maybe it's security but just trying to make that more relatable to other people i think is what's going to make help make sex work safer in the long run i hope i hope i don't know there's everyone's doing a lot of work on that and i'm really proud of everyone so yeah i think that's a great note to end on thank you <laughs> Thank you I think to see that it is the end. Um, but let's, yeah, but so this workshop, the proceeds are going to Umbrella Lane. And if you're a sex worker based in Scotland, you can apply on a monthly basis for a grant for as long as the fund lasts. And the grant is, I think, 150 pounds, right? Yeah. Depending on stacks of cash, you can donate to the fund. That Did I be... mention anything? No, no, you're good. And other than that, this has been recorded. We will blur out names and faces if that is an issue. Um, feel free to drop us a DM on Twitter if you have noticed your name and face and we'll sort it. And share your pictures. Share your pictures yes, and tag us love. and tag Jack. Share your photos. Yeah, and tag me. I would love to see them. And if you're open to me sharing them on my stories, I would love that because this was so fun and better than I hoped because I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but I feel like it did. And you're all so talented. And you're, thank you for being here. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. The meeting now, but thank you.